everybody. Welcome to the North Carolina Candor Critters webinar. My name is Roland Kays. We're coming live from the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and I'm joined by Mike Cove. How are you doing, Mike? Good, good. How are you doing? Good, good to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. We've got uh, an excited lineup to, exciting lineup today of um, some cool pictures, some cool science updates, and uh, generally catch you up on what's been going on with the Candor Critters project in especially the last six months, but the last two years altogether. Um, and so, in general, we want to start off talking about what all you citizen scientists have been doing to help us, right? We've had, um, just in the last couple months during the winter, uh, we've detected 20 species, over 3,000 photographs, um, 110 deployments, which is really awesome. And overall project total so far, we've got over 1.6 million photographs from uh, over 3,000 camera deployments. Mike. You recently finished your PhD here at NC State. Yeah. How many camera points did you have in your uh, in your PhD? I think I had like 400. <laughs> 400. So <laughs> we've got many, many PhDs <laughs> worth of data here, which is really awesome and which we really totally appreciate all the help of the volunteers to help us get this information, these cool pictures, these cool data from the entire state. So that's been really great. And so far, the uh, in terms of what we're getting on the cameras, um, in the winter, it's been pretty similar to what we've been getting over the entire year, which is a lot of deer, a lot of squirrels, and then a fair amount of other stuff. What's interesting, what you'll note, actually, what's maybe the most interesting is what's not on this. Oh, I have an idea. What do you think? Woodchuck, maybe? Woodchuck. No woodchucks and... No Maybe black no bears. bears yeah. yeah, right. So some of the critters that hibernate during the winter, we don't get them on camera. Not too surprising, but it's nice to see that. So now we can show how many more pictures of bears and woodchucks do we get during the uh, during this summer. So um, that's our overall species count. We've got a good number of bobcat, cottontail, raccoon, red fox, uh, uh, Virginia possum, etc. And some birds. And some birds, <laughs> which, yeah, right. So on e mammal, we with a, with the Canada Critters Project, we talk about uh, especially turkeys, grouse, and bobwhites. We can identify yeah. the ones that we actually sample well on the ground, mm -hmm. but um, the little ones we don't get very good data on them anyway. So we we just call them all birds. Maybe that's a little bias, a little bit of a mammal bias. That's all right. <laughs> so we want to talk about some of our favorite pictures from the winter. Um, and uh, we're starting off with this one. What do we have in this picture, Mike? So this is uh, a white-tailed deer uh, doe with what looks like three fawns. And it looks like they're probably three fawns of the year. Maybe the the back one to the left, you, you can't see, is maybe looks a little taller. But I would say this is triplet fawns. So she's got her hands full. This, I, yeah, uh, I'd this say so. <laughs> um, right, so we get tons of deer picture, but three fawns with one doe. That's a sign that this is uh, a pretty productive area, very, I would think, in Watauga County. Would these, these deer, these, these aren't skinny fawns. Right. Right. I mean, that's one of the interesting things. You can tell if, if an animal's got a, a yeah. belly full, you can see it. And these, these are all feeding well, which means where, where are does at this time getting food? In the, in the oh, mast, acorns and things like that? What about that? from mom? Oh, they're well, still suckling, right? Well, the fawns are suckling. Right, that's what I mean. Yeah. Right, For, yeah. So, so yeah. like, the point is, like, <laughs> that one adult deer is feeding three babies yeah that's uh, and, and so and, but it's a very green area so it looks like there's plenty of plenty of deer food there yeah even absolutely. though it's uh well that's this is september so a little further back mm -hmm. um so what what's this is like i love this picture because it's pretty camouflage yeah but you can see the critter what is it yeah that's a bobcat here in uh yancey county out by the mountains uh and yeah i was i was in interested to see you know it looks like the the spots that you typically see in a bobcat are kind of morphed into a, a stripe down the back, but not really very distinct along the sides. Is that yeah, common here? This is actually typical for North Carolina. If you go onto our site and look for bobcat pictures, we've got a lot, um, and uh, they're, they're, the spots are indistinct. Hmm. They're, they're kind of blurred in, but you can see why when you look at this picture, right? Look right. how well this animal blends in with his background. If you were uh, a rabbit or a squirrel running down this trail, this is a good chance if this bobcat was sitting totally still, you wouldn't even notice it and mm -hmm. you'd be easy picking. So this looks kind of like a sit and wait protocol. Yeah, this is sure. what a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of cats in general right. do this sit and wait hunting style where they just sit there and you know they take a cat nap maybe for a little while yeah. and they uh, uh, and they wake up, but they're really um, able to uh, um, just hide by staying still based on their camouflage. So I like this one where we kind of had the same view as it does, and you can just imagine yeah. it's waiting for a squirrel to come running up close enough mm -hmm. and then pounce on. Yeah, it. and this is out during the mi looks like the middle of the day, right? Based yeah. on how sunny it is. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yeah. 
All right, so the next picture uh, here from Orange County. What do we have here, Mike? This is just looks like a buck. Just He's another a, big buck on yeah, the camera right. trap. <laughs> right, what a lot of hunters are looking for in their camera trap. Yeah. Um, one of the few days we did have uh, snow cover. That's what I was just saying. I don't even remember having snow this year. Yeah. <laughs> it well, didn't last very it's long. It's been a little bit. Um, and so this was in December. And it's interesting because in North Carolina, snow isn't that big of a deal right. for deer. Um, but there's some other places deer can be really limited by snow. In fact, I think some of their northern range in Canada is limited by snow. And in some of the northern states where you get a lot of snow in the wintertime, yeah. they'll form these deer yards. Yeah, where I've never heard of that. Before. They all like stomp down the snow uh -huh. to have an area where it's not super deep. And they all hang out there just because they can they can like move around. And if a predator comes, they can kind of run, run around. Hmm. And so they form these congregations just because of the snow. Interesting. We don't have that in North Carolina. Yeah, the snow's probably not, not, not quite that deep. But here you can see uh, one deer kind of uh, cruising through the snow. Uh, here's another animal cruising through the snow. What do we got here? Oh my gosh! Look how the size of that guy. It looks <laughs> like a wolf. It looks like a wolf. But it, I, a I can tell it's animal. not. Uh, that looks like a, a a big coyote. Yeah. 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 And so uh, in North Carolina, coyotes on average are about 35 pounds. They'll kind of max out around 40 maybe 45 pounds um, wow. so this might be a 40 pounder but they they look bigger they always look yeah, bigger like look a lot of big. people are used to seeing their dogs right and they say my dog weighs this much and they see a coyote and they're like that must be at least as big as my dog but they're they're you know they're densely packed they're not fat they're these lean animals and so they often look a lot bigger than they are and i think the maximum size of north carolina is somewhere around 45 and the wow. average is more around 35 or even under 35. yeah um so that's much smaller than a lot of dogs right right yeah, and yeah. so people get get a little confused until you actually uh, get one on a scale and, and you see that this is a beautiful animal out hunting in the snow um and um uh, we actually have a, 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 on a on another study kind of somewhat related to canter critters, we have a project where we've been looking at the effects of coyotes on deer populations. And it just came out today. Um, so we'll put a, a, a copy of the, uh, of the study in the comments there on Facebook so you can check it out. We made a video with Adrian Smith here at the museum to talk about our study where we looked at coyotes, as you know, are new to North Carolina. Yep. And so our question was, if they're affecting the deer population, do we see a crash in the deer population after coyotes arrived in an area? Not only North Carolina, but we also did this with data from New York, from Florida, from New Jersey, from Ohio, from a lot of well, different states. All these front end of the coyote expansion. The front end, and then so the question mm -hmm. is, do deer crash after coyotes arrive? Do you know what the answer is? I, I think at a state level, it's no. It's no, they, yeah. yeah. On, 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 so some places they do, right? And coyotes, certainly they can eat fawns, and in some places they can have an effect, but on average, sort of big scale, we didn't find an effect. So that was a kind of a fun result. It just came out today, so it's cutting edge stuff. You can check out the video and, and link for, for more stuff. But um, coyotes, definitely eating deer, not obviously having a big impact on mm -hmm. the population themselves in North gotcha. Carolina. Let's move up uh, from the food chain from, yeah, right. on, the, on the, the scale here from deer. What do we have in this picture, Mike? This looks like a big elk. Yeah. Uh, that's a bull elk, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. It is. In North Carolina. Yeah. Wow. Uh, cool. So it looks like the distribution of these guys are really relegated to the Smokies. That's from... That's right. Yeah. So these yellow dots on the map are everywhere that Canada Critters volunteers have gotten uh, elk on camera traps. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty representative of where we know their range is. Right. Um, they were reintroduced. So we used to have elk in the East Coast, but this was like hundreds of years hundreds ago. Of years, they yeah. were hunted out a long, long time ago. And we uh, they brought them back and they introduced them to Smoky Mountain National Park. Um, I don't even remember when, like a decade ago or yeah, something yeah. like that. And they've been spreading out of the park. And so the data that Canada Critters have been getting is really useful to show where these animals actually are. And I know um, we've gotten some, what's kind of interesting, uh, north of, well, basically on both sides of Route 40. Oh, so yeah, you were saying. Yeah. Big interstate that runs through the Smokies, uh -huh. and the elk are definitely spreading out on either side, which kind of brings up a little bit of an issue of, well, you know, is a car going to hit them? That would be right. bad for the elk. That would be bad for the car. Sure. And so, you know, kind of bringing up this issue of finding safe passages for elk mm -hmm. to go under the road or something, you know, yeah. talking about some kind of overpass. I know bears right. have the same issue right, right, in right. this area. Um, but pretty exciting when we get our, our the state's biggest, I guess the biggest mammal. Well, them are bears. I, I guess. guess bears. bears well, some of the bears can get pretty large. Heavy, but <laughs> <laughs> the biggest, biggest, or the biggest ungulate anyway. Yeah. Um, and we're getting some good ones on camera trap. It's super fun when we get these pictures in. Very um, cool. So another one that we get um, 
not a lot of pictures of, and this was one I was really interested. I really didn't know what we were going to find when we started mm -hmm. this project. Feral hogs. Yeah, feral hogs. Feral pigs. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you've feral hogs are occur throughout most of the lower 48 states right and and in some areas they're really really detrimental and i i kind of would expect in the southeastern u.s there you think they'd be everywhere yeah everywhere right but yeah. look at this map right we have cameras in every almost every county i think mm -hmm. i think it's all but one now yeah. um and some of them tons of cameras and those yellow dots are the only place we've gotten feral right. pigs so it's interesting there's definitely this cluster out in the west mm -hmm. um which we kind of already knew and these other ones, I was curious, and I was just, you know, we, we go through all the pictures that are uploaded to Canada Critters. Here in the lab, we go through them, and I was looking through, through some pictures from uh, right around Lake Madame Mesquite. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, a lot of farmland mixed with Pocosin, mixed with wetland, mixed with some natural area, and we've got a lot of cameras out there. Mm -hmm. And one camera, all of a sudden, had pigs, and yeah. they were like... Every third day, yeah, they were yeah. going through. So there were there were lots of them, but none of the other cameras in the area had them. So it's like huh. they're there, super localized. But they're super localized, huh. and so that seems to be what we're finding. If you have information about pigs, if you see them, if you know areas where you uh, you you think they occur, or maybe if you're one of the volunteers who's run these cameras, give give us a comment, and uh, let's talk more about pigs at the end when we talk to uh, talk sure. about the questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is the last sort of favorite picture. Um, this is uh, the craziest picture we've gotten the last winter. One of the craziest pictures I've ever been involved with, with, with the camera trap. What's going on with this? It's not the best picture in the world, but it's definitely worth it. It's discussing. open for interpretation, Okay, right? so what's your interpretation? What's going on with this picture? So it sure looks to me like that uh, uh, looks like a doe, uh, a female white-tailed deer, and it sure looks like a raccoon is hanging like a sloth and it, there might be contact. <laughs> They're <between> kissing. <laughs> They're making out. <laughs> it's right? it's unclear, but it's but it's possible. Right. So these two <laughs> animals clearly, like normally, they're different heights. Right. And here we have this raccoon climbed to this tree because it wanted to to talk to this deer, kiss this deer, yeah. uh -huh. do something to this deer. <laughs> um, it's really it's really crazy. We don't know what's going on, but. What's interesting, what, um, Mike, we're very privileged to have him on the show today. Um, he's actually an expert in these kind of pictures because for his PhD work, he ran some cameras in uh, the Keys of Florida, which is kind of a strange place anyway. Right. And Wacky. he got a collection of pictures that are similarly crazy. Let's look at this one. Yeah. What's going on in this picture, Mike? All right. So this is a key deer, right? So this is a diminutive uh, subspecies of the same whitetails we have here in North Carolina and they're much smaller you know a little bigger than dogs but here is a, a young buck you can see his uh, uh, buttons coming yeah. in and he is uh, kissing and or <laughs> licking a cat and I, that's only one photo in the whole sequence yeah. they hung out together for a, a minute Okay. And uh, and he licked the cat all all up and down. <laughs> well, the cat's looking back. <laughs> right, right, right. They're, yeah, they're yeah. like tongue on tongue. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy. So why? All right, so the keys are a weird place. We can just count it off of that. But do you have any other idea what's going on? Why would they be? Well, each other? I've had a couple ideas about it. And, you know, uh, one idea that, that first came to mind was that the, uh, the cats are moving around the landscape. The air is salty. Maybe the cats are accumulating salt on their fur and the deer are licking. Okay. The salt from either the salt spray in the air or the saliva of the cats okay. uh, on their fur. But alternatively, you know, there is this kind of idea that uh, uh, cats do shed the uh, oocysts of, of a protozoan parasite called toxoplasma. Oh, the eggs. The eggs. And who knows, the uh, toxoplasma does have these uh, traits where it, it causes prey species Whoa. like rodents to be attracted to cat urine. So if it's occurring in the environment, it's, who all knows? Right, all right, we're getting far out there now. But you're saying there could, there could be some sort of third-party species of parasite that's causing these animals. That to could make deer. the deer interested in the smell of cats. Wow. Okay, but it wasn't just the cats that might got it. It wasn't just the, the cats, cats right? So that's why that's a little bit out there. That's and we need there. a lot more data right. to say. If you have an about idea that. about <laughs> why you think this cat and deer might be smooching each other or checking each other out, uh, put it in the comments. Meanwhile, we're going to move on to another one. Also from the Keys, so this is again a, not a North Carolina one, but it is another deer right. um, uh, uh, raccoon interaction like the picture we got. Mm -hmm. And this isn't smooching as much as. as uh, 
Well, you, you said maybe it's it's zombie <laughs> raccoon eating the brains, but yeah. but no, maybe actually eating the parasites, right? Eating right. The ticks. Right. So I th I think it's you know we had quite a, a substantial sequence here of this uh, one raccoon hanging out. He, yeah, he I think it, another he's picture here. holding the face of the deer, and sure looks like uh, she's grooming the the ticks off of the deer's face, and you can see. The, the deer stands still and waits, and even a second uh, raccoon came up. Right. So I think this is really a, a, a pretty interesting case of a mutualism. Right. A mutualism where one species helps another species, and they right. both benefit because, in this case, the deer is obviously benefiting from having fewer parasites, mm -hmm. and the raccoon's getting a little snack yep. of, 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 of the tick. So if we go back to our original North Carolina one, do you think there's a chance that, that they're. Um, uh, that the, the raccoon is grooming the ticks off the deer here? I think it's possible, but I also think that, you know, it looks sure like in the Keys, the raccoon had to grasp something to really get a hold of it. You right, know? right. So this looks like it would be pretty difficult to Raccoon's be hanging going out of his way. Yeah, I know. Right, right, right. It'd be hard to grab a hold of the thing. All right, all right. Well, so. So that, that was fun. Let's move on um, past our super wacky pictures. We can talk about it more. If you guys have questions, post them, uh, and we'll come back to it. But let's go on to a, a, a couple of reminders for our volunteers. Two things. First of all, don't forget to submit your site description form, right? We uh, really want to make use of the pictures and the data that you guys provide, but we can't do that if we don't know where you put the cameras and what the, what the conditions were. So mm -hmm. we need those site descriptions for them. I think you, you can't even upload the pictures if we don't have that. So please be sure to do that. And second thing is, if you want one of these awesome shirts, Mike and I are showing off here, this is the year two shirt, the year of the Red Fox. Red Fox. Um, we will give you one if you run a camera trap for a year. Basically, that would be nine deployments. It doesn't need to be a whole year if you, you, you can piece together nine deployments. Um, or if you, uh, if you help to recruit other people, we're always looking for new people all around the state. So if you help recruit, I think it's three new people, uh, then you can also get a shirt that way. So we've got a bunch of these shirts in the cabinet, and we don't want to keep them forever. Yeah, right. We want to give them away. So please help us, uh, help us give them away. Um, another reminder is that we're really looking for help running cameras in open spaces, in fields, right? We've got a lot of forest data got a fair amount of backyard data but some of these fields we think things might be different in the fields in the ag fields or the just the overgrown fields um, and so we're looking for people to run cameras uh, you can't literally you know strap it to a piece of grass right but generally put it in a, on a tree at the edge of the field mm -hmm. looking into the field so we can see uh, what's going on there yeah and uh, I'm gonna Mike I'm gonna make Mike read this one. Oh my gosh another all reminder the, all of, the alliteration here armadillo appraisal acquiring armored animal photos <laughs> <laughs> what's this all about Mike <laughs> this is about the uh, nine banded armadillos so uh, you know this is a North American native species uh, they're mostly their distribution's been restricted mostly by frost right um, because they, they dig around for all of their uh, prey resources and stuff. But um, they certainly appear to be, we're at the like leading edge of their... Uh, right, so if you look at their global distribution, right. we are right at the northern edge of their range. Mm -hmm. yep. And so in this map, the blue counties are places where we have some evidence that armadillos have been seen at least once. Mm -hmm. um, but we're looking for more systematic evidence of where these armadillos occur with the help of our volunteers to run camera traps in these counties. So if you're in one of these counties or you're nearby or you wanna take a, take a hiking trip and go visit yeah. a state park, right? We've got permits for all the state parks. You can select a, a, a site in one of these places, run a camera trap and help us see uh, where armadillos actually are because some of these records are a little yeah. bit sketchy you know it's like a roadkill it's uh -huh. like maybe it ran down the highway from South Carolina and yeah. got hit by a car <laughs> some people even think people let them maybe pick them up in their car mm -hmm. which seems a bit sketchy you know maybe what's not. interesting is sometimes they get uh, especially in the south they get stuck in the grates of oh. vehicles and so maybe because they they get hit right and so, so they maybe get hit, they're but getting not killed, transported they get and they get dropped a hundred miles right. later or something. but we know huh. that it's not all wacky <laughs> like road transit issues because we do have our first candy critters uh, armadillo photo oh, from nice. um from the uh, far southwest of the state yeah i think um, it was from macon county macon county okay yeah. good i couldn't remember exactly where it's from mm -hmm. um so this is great this is our first evidence from our study uh there's been a couple other evidence but so we definitely have armadillos in the state and um we'd love to learn learn more about them so if you're in the uh, southern part of the state and can run cameras help us look for armadillos that would be great um let's talk about the new libraries cool 
yeah, I, I believe there's nine new libraries across the state. So if you're interested in participating, we have these neat little packs where everything comes included and you can check those out of the library, right? Right, so we loan out um, uh, camera traps. If you want to run a camera trap, if you're not already a, uh, if you're not already a participant, you want to run a camera trap, we have an online training. Make sure you know what you're doing, and yeah. then uh, and then you can go to a local library. I think we work with, I don't know what our total number is now, it's about 50 libraries across the state, and um, these are some new ones that have just signed up, so you can go check out a camera trap, run it in your on your own private land, you can go to uh, some of the public lands that we have permits for, and uh, get these awesome pictures for yourself to kind of learn more about animals yourself, and then share them with us so, so that we can use it for our project. So we're going to move on now to uh, talking a little bit about science. We had a um, a pretty cool paper come out recently where we were looking at camera trap paper collected by citizen scientists here in North Carolina and also some where you're, you're working now up, up at the Smithsonian in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C., looking at where animals live relative to development, right? Yeah. I think if you fly around the country or drive around the country, you think about the landscape, there's these gradients of development where you mm -hmm. have cities, suburbia, Exurbia, the kind of low density housing, mm -hmm. rural and wild. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to know what does wildlife do in response to this development? Right. We worked with citizen scientists like you to run camera traps in all these places, and we found um, a lot of animals in suburbia. And mm -hmm. what was really, I think, awesome and key about the study was by using the same methodology, the same camera traps run across this whole transect, we were able to really show the big difference or lack of difference mm -hmm. between these different urban areas. So yeah. um, here's a pretty nice buck seen in someone's backyard at yeah, some point. Right. But so I, I'll just show you one example of what we found. These are for two predators. And um, it's showing you the proportion of pictures that we got um, from di different development zones. Mm -hmm. And so you can see two different strategies here, right? The red fox is most common in the suburban zones Mm -hmm. Pretty common in exurban, but then relatively rare in the wild and rural areas, whereas the bobcat's basically the opposite. Right. We get them out in the wild areas mostly, um, and there we get a couple in the suburban areas, which yeah. is kind of interesting. Right, right. Um, and you know what's really interesting? If you look at uh, patterns of bobcats across the country, mm -hmm. there's this east-west difference, where in uh, in Texas and California, they're uh, yeah. actually really common in suburban in areas. areas. Yeah, but yeah. In, uh, in the east... Generally, it seems like not, and now we've got some really good numbers. This uh, graph here is from Raleigh, mm -hmm. but we have similar results from D.C. Mm -hmm. um, but we got, you know, the great thing about cameras is you get not only just one species or two species, but you get lots. So right. um, how about these deer? Did they surprise you? Yeah, uh, fairly so, yes. Uh, you know, if you look at the deer, it looks almost perfectly <laughs> quartered, quartered out, right? They just, just don't care. Yeah, yeah. There's just deer in every zone, and this was surprising to me because, yeah. I mean, I live in suburbia uh, here in Raleigh, and I see deer around, but I just always presume, right. well, there must be really even more deer out in the state parks and out yeah. in the wilderness areas, but no, the deer are just in every zone yeah. at, at relatively the same abundance, the same relative abundance at all these places. So hmm. that was really cool, uh, and this is a cool example from, uh, from a recent paper that we, uh, that we published with, uh, with your data. All right. Time for the quiz. All right. All right, everyone online, take a look at these maps. Um, and uh, we've got three maps on the left mm -hmm. and three critters to the right. Yep. Um, this is an example of, of all the candor critter data so far. The uh, green dots are showing you where we've detected the species. The gray dots are showing you where we ran a camera but didn't detect didn't the species. Didn't detect them. And so the challenge for you is to match up which of these maps is the chipmunk, which is the coyote, and which is the black bear. And you can see the pretty different maps here, right? The yeah. top one is mostly to the west. The uh, middle one has uh, on the coast and in the mountains, but not in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then the other one is pretty much all over the all state, over. including the urban areas. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you already know the answer because we already went through this, <laughs> but uh, before we talked about the answer, was this obvious to you? To me, it was obvious. Were there, were there any surprises? No, I, you know what's interesting is I can see a couple uh, looks like detections in the middle of the state for for some. Okay, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Let's talk about this one first. Okay. This is the chipmunk. Yeah. Um, and 
This is wacky to me because if you travel anywhere around the Northeast, ar around the Eastern United States, there's chipmunks almost everywhere, everywhere. but not in Eastern North Carolina. Yeah. And this is showing they're really, really not. Um, there's a little pocket of them in Raleigh. Right. Um, it's, it's and uh, do you have them at your house? You probably no, don't. No, because no, no, no. you're you're east of Raleigh. Yeah. We're in North Raleigh. We had them some years and not other years. And then there's kind of a gap, and then you get them out in the mountains. So mm -hmm. this is a real pattern. This is really what's showing up on our cameras. This is what other people have kind of uh, guessed, but we are describing it better than anyone has before. Yeah. And we have no idea why. Yeah. We have no idea if, it, if it's soils, if it's temperature, if it's seeds, we really don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that's something we can, we can get at. Now yeah, that we have sure. some really hard data, we can start to match that up. Yeah. And then here we have these last two are, um, are the black bear and the coyote. You want to talk about those two ranges for a second? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, the black bear seems pretty pretty clear and apparent, right, where we have a, a strong population out on the east and then, you know, lots of bears out west in the in the Smokies and in Asheville uh, where they co-occur, you know, pretty amicably yep. with lots of people in Asheville. And then uh, coyotes, you know, just They're everywhere. ubiquitous. They're everywhere. I know. Yeah. Even like you look at the, of course, we have a lot of, of points in the triangle area where we've been running a lot of camera traps mm -hmm. uh, with volunteers and coyotes are showing up all over those areas. Um, the black bears really the coastal population that's where we get the most pictures right. i mean just like tons and tons of black bear pictures out there in the mountains we definitely get them but see but 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 less sort of relatively speaking so right. so uh, let us know how you did on our quiz if you uh, got got if you got those right um you know as we pull to pull together more and more data we'll be able to make more and more maps like this for all the mammals of the state that we get on the camera traps and a couple of the birds awesome as well well, so that's the end of our, our pre-prepared uh, material. Hopefully, we've given you something to chew on a little bit, uh, some cool pictures to get excited about, some interesting maps and graphs. Um, and so uh, we are um, ready to take some questions. Uh, you can type them in either to the YouTube or the Facebook feed, and um, we'll get them uh, we'll get them uh, answered. So we'll go ahead and get started. Mike, you want to take you want to take the first question? Yeah, there was a question here from Dana. Uh, are there any cameras in Moore County? And actually, there are quite a few already. Ninety-one so far. That seems like that seems pretty high. Yeah, that's, that's a good sample. But we can always use more. Um, and uh, if you go to the Candor Critters website, we actually have an interactive map, and it shows you live data. Well, live mm -hmm. from like midnight. It, it, yeah. it, it, it'll update every day, and you can see how many cameras have been set at each place, and you can even see some of the live results. Of, of relatively speaking how many pictures of deer bear and coyotes we have from mm -hmm. each county um which is actually I, i'm really proud of that because yeah. no other state has anything even close to that for showing you mm -hmm. where the animals live in your state and how common they are so um mm. uh, we actually now have cameras in 99 out of 100 counties for Quimmins County, if anyone is out there is from Quimmins <laughs> County or near for Quimmins County, we really want to get we want to get to that hundred percent, hundred out of hundred in North Carolina. Boy, where is for Quimmins County? Oh, it's up in the Northeast. Oh, okay, um, uh, and uh, it's kind of a skinny little county, uh -huh. and it's a white spot on our map. I'm embarrassed by it. We need to get out there one way or the other. Oh man, uh, to there. So let's go on to the next question. We got a question from Jake who says, "I've already set a camera, but I want to do another deployment." Do I need to continue finding new deployment spots or can I keep using the old ones? Yeah, so this is a good question. And the point here is that um, we like to move the camera to a new place every three weeks, roughly. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason we do that is that gives us a lot more information. If you leave a camera at one spot for many, many months, it starts to be the same information over and over again. Right. Um, and so we've actually, actually Mike has led some of the analyses. So mm -hmm. we, we've actually looked at this. We've drilled down to the numbers and we've seen what's the ideal deployment length. And it, it, like, how long should a camera be in one place? And we found that it's 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 about three weeks. You know, if you leave it out for four or five weeks, right, that's kind of okay. But once you get past the four weeks, you, it's kind of diminishing returns. So we'd rather you have it move it to a new place, um, and it could be nearby. Right? Right. We we ask ideally uh, 200 meters apart, so that we're getting to to get some different places. But so ideally, you'd be moving a camera to a different place uh, every three weeks. If you've got mm -hmm. one camera, kind of move it around uh, to help us get. A better sample. Cool. Um, so let's see. Do we have any other questions? Yeah. So you want to take, take uh, this one? Yeah, this one's from Monica. Uh, I want to participate in the project. How do I get involved? Um, you should have answered that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go to our website. <laughs> yeah. That's you can go to our uh, website. Yeah. Critters. So uh, website is uh, cantercritters.com.org. 
uh, North Carolina can of critters. If you Google it, it'll come up. Um, this is our website, and there's a right at the beginning. Uh, there is a, uh, a button you can click on. You can sign up. Um, the process is, uh, is is just to basically sign up, and mm -hmm. then we have a training mm -hmm. that we need uh, we need you to go through. It's a couple videos just to make sure you know how to use a camera trap, how we like to set a camera trap. So sure. um, you know, lots of hunters will set camera traps. And people will set camera traps for fun, but we do we do need a certain protocol because we want to make sure that we can make comparisons. So if we say that there's more deer in this county than this county, that it's not because people are setting up cameras differently. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not very complicated, So, but we do need you to go through that. Basically, we like to set the cameras at knee height um, so that they're uh, all at the same height. Some deer hunters will set them up at chest height because yeah. all they want are the deer. Right, but right, we right. want the squirrels and the skunks and the chipmunks and everything else. So mm -hmm. um, we ask you to set it at knee height uh, parallel to the ground and just have it set in the same way so that it takes pictures kind of all the time and the other thing is no bait no bait, um, you're right. uh, you know there's there's uh you get different animals if you put out bait but it kind of skews the data mm -hmm. um and um uh it gets us results that are going to be hard to compare right. someone puts out bacon someone puts out sausage like i don't know we're <laughs> yeah, gonna get right. different animals <laughs> for those different things um who are right. these people wasting bacon and sausage <laughs> Well, corn, right? A lot of yeah, people put corn. out corn. Yeah, right. And, um, you know, the great thing about running unbaited cameras is the number of animals that walk in front is a really, really useful information yeah. about um, how many animals are there, mm -hmm. what species are there, mm -hmm. what their behavior is, what their sex ratios are. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're doing a lot of work on the age ratios to look at the fawn, the fawns and right. the adults. And if you start putting out bait, you're going to screw all that up. Right, and right. so um, that's kind of our... Um, our, why, why we have this protocol. Uh, but so if you're interested, please uh, please do sign up. We'll loan you a camera trap. We'll show you how to run it. You can get the awesome pictures, share it with us, and we'll uh, see animals and do science. Yeah. Well, that's it. I think that's all the questions for today and uh, all the, the awesome animal pictures and stuff that we've got. So um, we will. Uh, you can join us again in August. We'll do another webinar showing you whatever crazy pictures we get between yeah. now, whatever crazy pictures you get between now and then. Uh, and uh, this is going to be fun, right? Because we're entering, we're, we're exiting the hibernation cold winter mm -hmm. season and getting into the baby season. This will um, be fun. This will be fun. So this is when, right, everyone's starting to mate right now. Uh, they're going to be having babies for, be, be, before too long. And uh, that's always some, makes for some Those some coyotes pictures. are pretty cute. <laughs> Yeah, these are all, well, the bear, I think the bear cubs, yeah. well, they're, they're my favorite. I don't yeah. Know. All right. Great. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you again in six months or, uh, or maybe before then on social media. Until then, uh, uh, see wildlife, do science.